Good morning, oracles! Well, we had a one heck of a moon day yesterday. Shout out to 420 and the others of you who had said that on Friday, and we sure did see it. So, we had a great day. Um, last night's video, I said today we may be flat and might be a little bit red with a little bit of profit taking. As of the time of this recording, we are about down 0.2%, so about flat to start the day pre-market. We'll see how the day plays out. A uh, little news that came in this morning, Neo and Xpeng showed that they had uh, increased deliveries uh, in January. So we should be seeing delivery numbers out of Shanghai and China uh, sometime later over the next week for Tesla. So we'll see how those numbers come in. Uh, obviously we are expecting an increase. For those of you who are over on Twitter, there have been a lot of pictures of Shanghai with thousands and thousands of vehicles ready to go out for export. So I know t uh, Elon had say, stated that they're trying to level things off so that they're, they're not doing as many, uh, as much of an end of the quarter push. So we'll see if this leveling off starts now and we'll see if that levels off exports. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna start yet or maybe when Berlin comes online. So when Berlin comes online, I'm sure the export numbers are going to diminish a bit. So we'll see over the course of this year how that plays out so that Shanghai can keep the majority of their uh, deliveries in within China domestically. Now, conversely, they did say that China was still going to um, be their main export hub, but I don't know if that's going to change once uh, Berlin comes online or if it's going to be the main export hub to everywhere except for Europe. We'll see how that plays out. Logistically, based on what Elon was stating, it sounds like China will remain the main export hub for everywhere except for Europe. And once Berlin, you know, fully ramps up, then, you know, that will take over the, uh, the entire European market. And so it does seem like the market has kind of digested some of the earnings call from last week. Plus, going into, you know, it kind of started Friday, continued Monday with the kind of sector reversal and the change of sentiment towards the high growth stocks that have been so beaten down over time. Tesla happens to fall into that category. So between that and then Credit Suisse changed their rating from neutral to outperform, that I think aided some of it. And so it looks like sentiment is starting to come back and, and the initial reaction to the earnings call is starting to fade in lieu of the reality of the situation that Tesla is in. Deutsche Bank also did discuss with internal, uh, with investor relations over at Tesla about where their focus is. And, and when it comes to Optimus, they said it's, you know, a side project, but they're going full ahead, full steam ahead on it. So I think what that means is, you know, something that we have discussed here, which is Tesla is not going to step away from EVs to go work on Optimus. That's not it. They're still obviously the meat and potatoes of their business is EVs. They are focused there, but going forward into the future, Optimus is going to be a main piece of their company in the future. So they are going forward with that full steam ahead because if that's their future, they need to get that groundwork laid down now. So, you know, just multitasking. And as they did say on the earnings call, they have a lot of stuff on their plate right now. So a lot of gears moving. We'll see how this all pans out over time, but it seems like Wall Street in the market has had a chance to digest a lot of this and in great timing with the uh, macro environment kind of changing gears a little bit to favor high growth stocks. Tesla saw its 10.7% day yesterday, which was amazing considering we saw the complete opposite last week with the 11% loss. And now on the technical analysis side of things, uh, we did see because of the uh, huge weekend jump, there is a gap now between 846 and 862. We've discussed gaps before. Some people believe in technical analysis, others don't. All I know is that we have discussed two gaps over the last two months and they both got filled. So the gaps get filled nine out of 10 times based on technical analysis. Whether this one gets filled or not, we don't know. But judging by the patterns that we're in, I think we're going to end up getting it filled. So my thoughts in initial uh, views of it were that we were going to be going into a very long and stretched out consolidation period over the next six to eight months where we have some major swings up and down and then it's going to narrow as we get closer towards election time. Um, I had also talked to somebody else in the comments discussing that this looks like a dead cat bounce. 
And it totally could be. And then 420 had pointed out, somebody on Twitter mentioned that we are in a megaphone pattern, which is where it expands instead of consolidates. That would then lead to what could be uh, viewed as a dead cat bounce as well. So we may have lower lows and higher highs over time before we come into a consolidation period. So I'm gonna pay attention to the charts just to see where we're at. Um, as I discussed in last, not, last night's video, within my IRA, it is tax-free for me to sell uh, anything for a profit in there. So some of you in the comments have been doing this with your IRAs, which is, you know, try to do your best at timing the Tesla at the top to sell it, take your profits, and then when it comes down, buy back in to try and just, you know, build yourself up some more shares. I'm going to start practicing with this and seeing as the patterns that we're starting to go through, this could be an optimal time to be able to do that. Because especially if we're gonna be going into a megaphone pattern where we have higher highs and lower lows, you know, you can catch a high, sell it there, and then buy it in down below. And if we get, I mean, heck, you get 50% swings in some of these, which we almost saw, I mean, you can get yourself, you know, almost double your shares. Again, this is a risky maneuver. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just something I'm going to be practicing with and trying out to see if I'm good enough to even make it happen. There's a strong possibility I might even lose some money along the way. So again, if it's something you're going to try, you're doing so at your own risk. But it's something I'm gonna just give it an effort at. So I'm gonna follow this. I'm gonna keep monitoring it um, you know, and see how this plays out because I think we have some good momentum starting right now based on yesterday. So if we get good delivery numbers that come in, we get news of Berlin or Austin or both opening up, we can see some great positive catalysts pushing the stock a lot higher, maybe over 1,000 or 1,100. Again, numbers at this point I cannot predict because who the heck knows where we're going to go when we're doing 10 and 11% swings in a day. And taking out the short-term movements of the stock, I still see the stock doing extremely well over the next five to 10 years, especially if they can solve FSD by the end of the year and get robo taxis on the road in the next five years. So I see a strong, strong movement forward for Tesla. So this year, uh, even if you're not going to play swings, if you are a long-term investor, which most of you are, pay attention to the ups and downs. I still see a very much of a roller coaster ride for the year, but these dips could be an amazing opportunity to buy in and get yourself some long-term shares at bargain basement prices. I still am anticipating a split later this year. Again, don't know when, the, it's gonna be up and down all over the place, but I still think we see a split this year, which means that whatever shares you have are going to be multiplying. The value does not change, but after you, know, you split your shares and you have more of them, and the company continues to grow, that will just multiply your investment even more. Let me know in the comments below what your strategy is for the stock over the course of the year. What trajectory do you think we are on? Do you think we are going to see higher highs and higher lows? Dead cap balances? Do you think we're gonna just trade sideways? Let me know your thoughts on that. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all of the latest Tesla news as well as pertinent stock market information and all of my daily trades. Thank you all so much. Have a great one.